The plaza, that obligatory piece of space that rests alongside our city's office towers, is at times a jewel and other times the scourge of the earth. Done thoughtfully, the plaza can be a delightful place to linger and enjoy. At other times, its sterile or downright ugly and mean-spirited intent can repel us away. Their prominence in our central business districts, however, mean they deserve special attention. Let us then descend from our perch and direct some special attention towards the plaza at Park Place, located in Vancouver's main office district. Required as part of the erection of this 35-story AAA office tower built in 1984, this long, narrow plaza was installed between the office tower and the cathedral alongside Burrard Street. The design of the plaza paid careful attention to its neighbors, particularly this prominent one, the city's oldest church, the Christ Church Cathedral. In fact, were it not for a transfer of density rights to Park Place for cash, the famous church may have faced demolition. Today, the historic church facade plays a leading role in this plaza's experience reminding the suits of what existed before these towering stands of glass and long articulating buses. Sitting upon the southwest benches of the plaza, users are also treated with a visual escape to the North Shore Mountains. What is the primary intent and function of this space? It is a space primarily geared toward providing respite for office workers. While this is the goal of many plazas, it is one that Park Place does quite well. See how empty the space is shortly after the lunch hour is over, or on the weekend. Ordered, clean, tranquil, and welcoming are four words that might be used to describe Park Plaza. But essential to the idea of this space is the evocation of many West Coast symbols. There is falling water, that mountain vista again, and also trees, coastal conifers, and pines just above the waterfall. But these are only for the user's viewing pleasure. Like animals in a zoo, they are to be enjoyed, but only at a safe distance. There is also the additional sub-intent of improving circulation and access to the church and office tower. Though today the church is covered in construction wrap, a little detective work can give us clues, and ground materials are always a good place to find. They can convey symbols and hierarchies, and in Park Plaza's case, the unified ground design tell us that the church, public space, and the space in front of the office building is in fact all Park Plaza that this space is one. We wanted to see what activities really go on here though, so with a notepad, our detective gear, and a newspaper to look inconspicuous, we watched. While studies have shown nature elements to greatly relieve stress, nothing provides relief and gratification, like a cigarette. This was a very popular activity at Plaza at Park Place. Some enjoyed a quickie right outside the doors, while others took their time, capitalizing on the fair weather to enjoy the cigarette out in the plaza. The designers have taken this into consideration and have installed several butt-out structures near the benches. But we noticed butts tend to prefer the ground, often in clusters, as do their handlers, who are socially quite active, talking and talking. Sitting was also another important activity. This might not strike you as an intellectual bombshell, but people like to sit where there are places to sit. And there are many nice places to sit at the Park Place Plaza. But 
while they are nice places to sit, people tend not to sit out in the cold or wet weather. The one exception, of course, being this plaza's number one activity, smoking. The plaza at Park Place has a diversity of seating spots. Some are small and apart, inviting the solo plaza user, while several others are clustered, providing comfortable opportunities for social interaction. Here, you see an office worker, hear a bus driver and hear another just passing the time until their next activity. When you enter the plaza at Park Place, the first thing you notice is the water flushing down the brown wall. But what quickly stands out the most is a very special sort of sitting area, the amphitheater. Five double-height stone steps, great for seating, descend about 12 feet and orient towards the stage. Sitting on these steps will take you to the furthest away as possible from the hustle and bustle of Burrard Street. Listen to the noise of the street. Now, listen to the relaxing sounds within the square. People must also move. They must walk to the office for lunch and to run errands at the many nearby retail businesses. Sometimes, users will simply wander while on the phone, moving this way and that. Unintended uses also occur in the space. Clearly, the designers did not intend for people to be on these step-like structures near the waterfall. But see how easy and amusing it is to navigate these steps? This structure provides just enough challenge to entice children. Don't let security see. The short stairs throughout the space prove irresistible to passing teenagers with skateboards who risk tight security to squeeze in a few tricks. While the plaza is a thoughtful design that encourages interaction and provides many opportunities for seating, it fails to account for the defining feature of this region, rain. For many months of the year, it is underutilized, its main role becoming that of a point of visual interest for the passerby, an overflow space for pedestrian traffic on Burrard Street. It is easy to imagine a more animated and successful year-round plaza if only some canopy was introduced so as to protect users from the rain. Perhaps the most important influence of behaviour is sunlight, and where there's little of it, few people tend to linger. This sunlight deficiency in the plaza is not extreme, but it is certainly a challenge that hinders the overall success of the space. And so we end our film on the plaza at Park Place. We hope you enjoyed this thoughtfully designed space as much as we did. We come to these places not to escape from the city, but to partake in it. Thank you.